Thread Not, fellow wargamers and warships enthusiasts, we're going to take a look at the Dread Knot. I know, not really funny. But hey, this is Gamer1745 here with a fairly detailed look at the Dreadnought. We're going to start with the history um, of it and the importance and then look at more details of just how War Thunder is interpreting the ve this vessel and then from there get into a battle. Um, so you, if you want to jump forward to one of those, you very well may, or just sit back and watch the whole video. Okay. They did things right with this vessel in many, many elements of it, particularly in the name uh, naming of the vessel, Dreadnought, which means fear not kind of thing. Don't be afraid. There were multiple naval theorists and developers at this time looking towards an all big gun battleship. Some Italians, some Americans but the British were the first ones to it. And this is primarily down to Jackie Fisher. This is um, Jackie Fisher's, he was um, the, the head of the British Navy, the, the first sea lord of um, the British Navy at the time. And he really pushed this vessel through. It was laid down in October. 1905 and commissioned in December 1906. So just a little over a year from starting building to actually getting it commissioned and operating for the Navy, which is a very fast time period. And so let's look a little bit of background here and what makes this vessel special. Now there's a lot better vessels following on from this, but this is where it really all starts. Technology is coming along. Prior to this, there's a couple of things that I feel are important here. Um, naval gun technology is getting better. One of the problems with, and you're looking all the way back to, you know, the wooden ships, you know, muzzle loading um, cannons, is rates of fire. Because even if you can fire a broadside in an old wooden ship all at once that's probably not going to sink your enemy if you're shooting in another major warship you got to batter that ship you've got to really hit it hard so you need lots of guns to do so because very much so is the reload time for um cannons as they get bigger and bigger uh, and that is important. So a lot of vessels, and we can see, uh, let's jump over here to this guy, which is a Dreadnought class ship. But now these, all these big turrets are all the same gun, where in a lot of pre-Dreadnoughts, these might be, you know, the four and a half might be of one caliber. Um, and these side ones, maybe this, if these were 12 inches, these might be 10 inches, constantly sort of varying the um, caliber on the guns, a lot of casemate guns down below, maybe casemate guns up high like this, lots of casemate guns, few um, but varying sizes of naval guns and to put a lot of fire on it because with a lot of guns. And the None of this is really first here, but it's it's put together right here is what you're seeing with this vessel. That you're, um, and we will take a look a little more at the gaming aspects, but you're building better, um, you know, ammunition elevators that are bringing ammunition from protected down below up through a protected column, um, brought up here into handling rooms that get it ready and then again another sort of lift elevator that you put in the shell that's going to be projected and then bags of powders yeah these are the bags of powder um, that go in behind it maybe multiple bags of powder behind around and all and needs to be mechanically rammed in here so your your engineering mechanics your naval architecture is getting good enough to do that handle these big rounds and fairly quickly. 
The other, in my opinion, the other major importance is fire control systems. They existed before here, but this is one of the first major vessels in the British Navy and I think basically any Navy that has electronic fire control systems. And they get better even in the dreadnought over its lifetime. Um, it's fairly short lifetime here, but you, the guy who's going to aim, going to um, aim the guns is up here. He's looking through this range finding because you know it uses focus, and they calculate range um, and direction of the the enemy vessel. Obviously, calculating your your position, the direction that you're steaming. And do uh, mechanical computing, basically. Um, and then it transmits how to aim the guns to the rest of the turrets. So it's no longer... Now, these turrets do have, just because this can be knocked out, they do have um, uh, uh, aiming you know, um, optics in the turret to aim it. But you can see, especially here, you're much lower than here compared to there. So um, coordinated fire so that these would all be firing at the same target. Um, at least that's how it's designed to be done at the same time very effectively. So where if you would need a lot more independent gunnery um, and so you're to be able to batter through the other vessels and you were thought to before need to get close enough to be able to see from down here to see the enemy vessel. Now not you had great range before with the vessels guns at some of them but the inability to effectively aim it at another vessel so by moving up here coordinating the um, the aiming through the various turrets you're extending that range out not technically over the horizon because you need to be able to see it but your horizon has gotten f further out and your accuracy has gotten much better so this is sort of the the, the mechanical revolutions are being developed um, you know, for the ammo handling and the technical um, aiming uh, capabilities have been improved enough to make your engagement range out there much further. And so going over to an all big gun battleship. Now we do see um, a bunch of these um, lighter 76 millimeter guns. They're still there, but notice on this vessel particularly, none of them, not even these, are under armor. That's just maybe some metal, but it's not armor. There is still a worry of destroyers, motor, or torpedo boats. Motor torpedo boats weren't around. I mean, they had engines in them, but they were like smaller than destroyers. And destroyer is short for torpedo boat destroyer. Because torpedo boats were around, they had very few guns. The main thing to do was to fire torpedoes at big ships for a lot less money than it cost to make big ships. They needed to get vessels to intercept them. Torpedo boat destroyers, they thought, well, why not also put, instead of having torpedo boats and torpedo boat destroyers, let's just put torpedoes on the destroyers so destroyers become sort of jack of all trades. Eventually, anti submarine warfare is added into that as submarines become more of a thing. But yeah, um, so you do have some needs to engage smaller, lighter vessels if they get near enough to your vessel. Otherwise, yeah, your, your main going after other big vessels is just the main gun battery on this design. Um, as you can see, these might be able to sort of point up in the air a bit, um, but I don't really think they're um, anything like a proper anti-aircraft gun. That that mounting, I wonder whether that those two mountings might be more of an anti-aircraft gun. There's probably these the two quick fire. That, those may be counted as anti-aircraft guns. As you can see, the aiming mechanism, yeah, those two have got to be set up as anti-aircraft guns. Those are probably later additions to it from that compared to these other because these are um the 12 pounder 18 kilo three inch because they're both 76 millimeter but two different um 
ways of measuring a very similar gun. Um, well, I bet you these are. So this is the this starts the revolution of m main gun battleships. After a while, of course, all of the turrets end up being on the center line. And so these side turrets are removed then or, or shifted to um, the ability to have every gun fire in a broadside, every main gun fire on the same broadside. So that is sort of, becomes the goal, but that's not yet the goal in these early vessels. They're not yet thinking in the terms. They're also sort of kind of thinking a little bit of fire like that or fire like this as you're going forward towards the enemy. I don't know quite because it wouldn't you wouldn't be firing like this you'd be firing you know up out towards the enemy so maybe you could fire all six of those at once maybe might do damage to these things pretty quickly just a shock wave to the boats but hey if you're sinking a big battleship you're not worried about a few small boats on you okay so let's take a look here um oh Okay, this is well, IGN um, Mikuma. Don't we have a good British battle or heavy cruiser? What is this? This is a, um, don't know, heavy cruiser, probably um, uh, 150. Yeah, this is a light cruiser. Okay, so here we, we're here with a light cruiser here. We have you know, 140 millimeters of armor. 65, 25, 100 millimeters, 25 on here. Okay, 25. So you get this. It's a light cruiser, which traditionally been an unarmored cruiser. Now, coming over here. Well, the front of this is 279. The back is 203. And then remember, this is the first. So this is actually fairly weakish compared to some of the others. But um, 279 armor on the turret. You've got a 279 belt here, 203. So you can see the armor is just considerably, and you got armor coming down from the top for plunging fire. Oh, that counter finally end. Okay. And so you're much greater armored, plus you have the coal bunkers, which function as armor. Think of it as super duper stellinium um, fuel tanks. And so you can take lots of hits on this vessel and keep going. I have not actually played this one. I've been playing the American and the German ones leading up to this. So we'll try this out. Now, they do have torpedoes. And if you can see here, they're, they're in the unarmored section well below the water line. Do they have any in the rear? I don't think so. Let's see if we can zoom out a little bit more. Oh, come on. No, stay here. And then to the rear, then to the front. Okay. And so um, they're just here. Um, and what are they? How many do they have? Uh, it's just um, two torpedoes? Is that all? I don't know. So you have just a few torpedoes here. Um, yeah. This was still sort of common. Um, got to remember, the proper name of these vessels isn't battleship. It's line of battle ship. It is a ship strong enough armored to stand in the line of battle. So you fought these vessels all lined up one after the other in a line at ahead and with the enemy normally you wanted it like over to there. So you're putting your broadside to it. And so this is how you're maneuvering, because when you're starting, when this is starting out, your radio isn't very reliable. I mean, it exists for sure, but it isn't very reliable. Antennas, radio equipment can be knocked out. So the Navy has a long tradition. It's relying upon, um, at least in the day, on s signal flags, at night signal flares, but which would either be, um, and prim primarily be, Flags raised up on the halyard, you know, that spell out words or codes, or potentially even somebody, you know, back here um, out waving their arms around with semaphore flags, semaphore flags to the vessel out behind it. So, you know, the captain's looking at 
Okay, he's saying prepare to turn, you know, if you can't see, you know, they'd be relaying messages back and forth up and down the line. So, yeah, you need to try to control all of these vessels as a fleet, unlike what happens in War Thunder. And so if you are coming along a, a line of these things, uh, torpedoes might be able to come in and hit below the waterline and do some particularly bad damage. Now this has one other weapon on it that isn't listed here in War Thunder, and I don't know how War Thunder is handling it. Because of the history and tradition still going on, this has a ramming bow. You notice how this bow comes way out here. Um, and we can see here a bit, but nothing like like that. Um, I mean, this is cut cut back here. This here. Oh, let's go to the, the North Dakota here. Now, this may also this probably also would be considered a ramming bow. Um, and so this definitely is very much of a ramming bow. And so it's meant to be able to ram other ships. Now, which we sort of gone into the analysis of this vessel without talking too much about the history. By the time World War I comes around, this is getting very sort of outdated. Um, it's a one-off. It isn't a lot, a lot of class uh, similar. Navies like to put the same type of vessel from a class in a squadron. So they all move the same. You know, they all have the same um, you know, speed. Uh, and handling so that so they would tend to if you have a say a class of four of a battleship have all four into a battle squadron this was a one-off here um so yeah um my flag got or my jaws are sort of messed up there from before but okay um so you have the um, the RAM on this. It's a bit outdated. It's not. It doesn't get into any of the major um, misses, Jutland because it's off sort of leading another patrol squadron. But a German vessel fires a torpedo, surfaces. The captain sees it, and um, immediately um, orders full ahead to ram the vessel. Um, just watch before starting this. Drock Ninefell's great channel on the ships, and he talks about, well, why didn't they just think of shooting the thing? He um, thinks instead of trying to ram it. Well, if you look at the front of this vessel, because presumably it wasn't didn't up, pop up behind the vessel because he rammed it with frontally. Um, uh, you know, trying to shoot it. Yes, yes, I know. There's, um, I'm getting in here. There are these guns here. Um, but still, I don't know quite any, so you might be able to turn and get the guns, but I don't know if you trust your secondary gunnery's, um, uh, accuracy, where presumably if it's close enough to you, and I'm also presuming it's, it's moderately close, it's not way off, if you actually think you can you know, go full steam ahead and hit it before it sinks. So it's probably fairly close. So I'm sort of doubting any of the main gun batteries were not likely to bear on it. So the the dreadnought is the only bus, only battleship to purposefully sink a submarine, not by accident, but on purpose. You know, specifically going for it, and does so by ramming. So that's sort of its history. Didn't do too much. By 1919, it is decommissioned and eventually sold for scrap. The very first dreadnought out there. Right, so that's sort of some of the history intermixed with the vessels. We see the armor, pretty heavy. X-rays, coal bunkers. These coal bunkers work as great armor. And you can see um, here how thick they're effectively. This So this... This, I think, um, is going to come off a little, not quite as good as some of the other top tier currently as, as this video is released, top tier naval vessels, but it does deserve a place in War Thunder. Now, let's see, let's try to get into a battle. Yes, just naval arcade. And look at it. Look at it in action. 
Now, the two things with these, because I, like I said, I've been mostly playing the German um, top tier and the U.S. top tier vessels. And mostly what I've been is sunk by is aircraft or torpedoes, whether fired from like a destroyer or when I was playing with some friends, custom battles, um, you know, motor torpedo boats. So I fear the torpedoes much more than the other... Um, guns gun or you know gun class um ships and particularly aircraft because these have very very poor like i say i think there's two things that would technically be considered anti-aircraft guns on board that these are just not that effective in a um dealing with enemy aircraft come on Don't you know you're on camera and you need to show that wait times are low? There's 21 waiting for battle. Yeah, just not a lot of light here, I know. There's some. There's some out there. Yeah, these are just rank 5. There's some rank five. Let's let's get into a battle. How do you all like the new um, blue water fleet and coastal fleet, and how it's separated? I th I like that concept. Great. Um, I think it's good right now. Um, because you can mix the two together in the battle, but if you're only going to grind, I mean, grinding points from a, well, here we go, coastal fleet only go to coastal vessels, and similarly with blue water vessels. As, right now, these are top of the heap, but... Once we get more modern vessels out, I think a lot of these are going to fade. One thing, again, this is taking a while, um, is low-tier vessels can be quite effective at these tiers because, like I was saying, come in a little LS. Those are, I think, I think some of the most deadly vessels of this game. They're small, super fast, have a decent single gun on them, and have torpedoes, especially in a... Um, we're going to start out here. Um, we're going to go to... No, no firing right now. I don't want to waste whatever small battery ammo. Um, yeah, we just have two torpedoes. Don't really care about those. In this vessel. Really glad that we're a bit away from all that mess. I don't like being in the midst of the target zone. Okay. When when you're shooting at light cruisers and particularly destroyers, we'll target this destroyer right out here. Make a ranging shot. Let's go on that. You want to use your high explosive rounds. Your more armor penetrating rounds need to either hit um, something um, thick when it comes to, you know, um, internal machinery, uh, which can be a gun mount or a engine for them to detonate. Otherwise, they are likely to pass through the vessel without exploding. We do want to get it in within the circle. This is reasonably maneuverable for what it is. Okay. Near the first forward volley, but we're going to wait for the rest of the. Rest of the guns to reload. I 
No, I have not been watching my follow shot, so I'm not quite sure. do that let's watch and see see this shell splashes what they did come up with at least I know the Japanese used by World War two was die packs ooh that was a good well not going to good hit I mean sort of sort of hit them but that was pretty good um, die packs in the base of the shells so when they blew up you saw a really colorful um, sort of water plumes coming up so you could tell your gunnery um, landing uh, at the enemy vessel versus other ships in your squadron also firing just so you can correct your so you don't mistake was well, that ours is that airs who, who's whose shell impacts were those we're still we need to get Okay, I see behind. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're gonna turn turn here. Oh, we missed some torpedoes there. If you sail too long in the straight line, you're gonna get hit by torpedoes. The more likely, at least. I'm mean, not with the core, obviously, but still at 98% crew. Basically, a full crew. I don't need to lead it by as much, but oh, why aren't you firing? Why aren't you firing? Come on. Ooh, that was a good hit right in his engines. I'm just saying quite if you're not ready to fire. What gun are we staking here? Yeah, I know we're picking on a destroyer, but... Okay, he's listing pretty damn badly, so I'm going to... Target. Oh, kill assist on him. But he got final sort of credit, but whatever. Yeah, we're on fire. Put the fire out, put the fire out. Prepare for more than minor damage, that is. There we go. 76. Ooh, some hits. There, but not great hits, maybe. Good crews matter in this. Maybe not, you know, a whole lot, but they do matter. Okay, let's fire there. Ooh, that was a good hit right into its main superstructure. We preferred a full hit and sink it, but whatever. Here, see we have that little uh, motor torpedo boat out there. We're going to put it at surface targets. Because he is what I fear, like I say. He is what I fear. Oh, target this little doohickey off my side here. Yeah, that, that, that. Make sure he, he doesn't want to come too near and put a torpedo in me. Okay, we got a kill assist off that. Okay, we got a heavy cruiser way out there. Light cruiser. 
Oh, yep, there. See, I thought maybe. See them coming at me there. Let me see if I get in between this pattern. I think I am there. Okay, I need to make sure that we're there. Okay. Yeah, there we go. That's good. Oh, just a nice big high explosive bash on you. On your head there. Somebody got him, it looked like. Did they? Nope. Come on, guys. Target him, sink him. You got all those little guns? Shoot this guy. Shoot him. Um, yeah, there we go. Okay, but I want to put the wall, main gun volley right into you. We're still at 62. You hear that? You hear that? Sound, there's an aircraft right above us here. Yep, see. Well, we got the other guy and we got got from the aircraft. No, I don't think having my um, gunners as um, anti-aircraft gunners would have helped much um, for that vessel compared to trying to deal with a little motor torpedo boat out there. That guy. But yeah, well, we didn't come here to see this vessel. So, let's head back to the hangar. Yeah, yeah, well, I know. Okay, what do we... Oh, we get to research some more rudder replacement. What do we want to do for our protection? Oh, toolbox. We want a toolbox. We definitely want the toolbox. But back to the dreadnought. There we go. That is HMS Dreadnought. A good vessel. Um, and rather well. Um, rather good vessel taking out other battleships. But as we can see, fairly weak against small vessels, uh, small boats, and against very weak against aircraft. So those are your big dangers with this so you have any questions post them below comments of course 
you made it this far you better like the video um, you can also subscribe if you haven't already um, and sharing the video helps so much see you on the battlefield or high seas and war thunder i play a lot um hopefully see you sometimes see you next time for more historical gaming videos